Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions, where we are critical, not cynical, of the music we listen to. I'm your host, Brian, and being that it is Monday, we are entering a new week and a new theme. This week's theme is Horns, inspired by a creator request from a few weeks back from the band We Are Many, We Are Legion. They utilized a horn section with some new metal aesthetic and created something really interesting, and I threw it into the polls, and it won. Very excited about this. Everything this week is going to feature a horn section that could be as something as simple as just brass, or it can also include saxophones, and it doesn't necessarily need to be rock or metal. However, I kind of get the feeling we're going to be looking at a lot of that this week, pairing metal music with horns. So, let's dive into this one. We're going to be starting off with Black Country, New Road. The track in question is Opus, and interestingly, it would actually have worked last week as well, as I believe it is the final track from the album ants from up there all right let's dive into this and see what black country new road is bringing to the table today there we go the audio said there was some stuff on the right side but I wasn't hearing it. I wanted to make sure my speakers were working. Oh, headphones. Beautiful full little run up there. <laughs> what a playful line. Ooh, okay. Interesting dissonance there on that final part. Getting quite a bit cluttered layered wise and musically. Yeah, something needed to give. I was not expecting this, but I figured we were going to simplify a little bit, cut down to one instrument with uh, the bass and drums behind it. Six eight five. On back of my new bike, down under Very somber. Extremely and dreary and so purely melancholic. On that unusually forgiving Sunday. Back to this idea. Such a cool line. Loving the harmonies. Yeah, so rising up, now rising down. One's going up, one's going down. It's 
not chaotic, it's confusing. Like, the instruments weren't all given the same direction. Of course, we have these high energy sections pushed against these very dreary, melancholic ones as well. So a lot of opposition in here. Love those sixteenth note ideas in the violin. Actually, that's the sax, isn't it? ideas from every part of the track so far layered in here it is just so much of the track. Why is why is autoplay going on? That's not normal. Um. So let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> Interesting track. It is, at least to my mind, incredibly emotive. There's very few aspects in here that I think 
the music is there for the purpose of storytelling in a more direct fashion, like when we have melodies that take the listener on a journey. This is more about exploring specific atmospheres. Whether it is the dreary melancholy of our verse, possibly, uh, the rising intensity of our slow burns, or the chaotic confusion of our big moments. No one melodic component, no one instrument's line is designed to be looked at in a singularity, in a vacuum. Everything here is designed expressly to be a part of a larger whole. Whether they are working together to create something additive, like in our dreary section where everything works for the melancholic uh, emotion, or they're working in clashing components to ensure that none of them are heard individually because they are working towards a noise type of uh, production. And through that, it really portrayed to me an emotional story of the song. Paired a little bit with the lyrics. Having the lyrics up on the page with very simple repetitive music behind it was interesting. I'm not too opposed to doing lyric videos more often, but it really worked in this case where the music behind the lyrics was always the same. The dynamic parts of the music were the parts where there was no lyrics. So when the vocalist began to sing, I could really pay attention, especially on the second time that we hit the verse and the final rising action moment. Um, because I already knew what was going on underneath. So what is the emotional resonance here? What kind of themes are we looking at? Uh, I already pointed them out. We have a dreary style, we have a chaotic style, and we have slow burns, rising action. It's really the combination of all three of these that tell the story, as is to be expected. We have melancholic uh aspects that lead to chaotic noise and occasionally we also have a slow burn that takes us from one to the other um there's a bit of bit of pensiveness as well uh in some of the lyrics um a lot of this was in the past what we built is a phrase that happens often uh a lot of this seems to be introspective or pensive in a way, to look back on the past. And so, at least from my very surface level understanding of the lyrics and some of the uh, themes we have going on in the music, I get this as the repercussions of past actions. And maybe not necessarily regret, but a sadness about the current state of things. That's kind of what I get out of the whole thing. Now, how do we accomplish this, though? I think this is one of the most important parts. Because it's easy to just say, this is what this section feels like, this is what this section feels like, but why does it feel like that? Uh, you know, the opening section is dreary. We have uh, actually a really nice dynamic build into the track where we start exceptionally quiet. Uh, the left side is louder than the right. Uh, the right took me a while to even hear anything was there. My visualizer said audio was coming out of the right headphone, but I honestly did not hear anything. I uh, might have needed to turn it up a bit, but whatever. Um, eventually we get some instruments, some trumpet coming out of that side, saxophone, uh, violin. I think that's all I heard from the... And then eventually a guitar as well. Um... And it's just a lot of these elongated notes with swells. This is something that happens a lot in here and is what gives it the melancholic feel. Wow, 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 wow. 
we get these we start quiet we increase the width and volume just a little bit and bring it back down towards the end of the note to move into the next one uh, we even hear a lot of this in the vocals which kind of implies once again this sort of uh, lethargy the beginnings of notes the attack the part that should be the loudest is not the effort just to create the sound is barely there and it's only after the sound is created that we actually get a little bit of push into it but so much of that energy is already lost and we have to come back off of it very lightly almost as if the act of playing this song is draining in and of itself um, and we don't have a lot of movement here either it's slower notes quarter notes uh, majority of the time we have some instruments playing half notes and whole notes to provide a, a textural floor or ceiling to the song and I'm sure as you could tell just from the notes it's not exciting it's not angry it's not joyous it is just sort of dreary uh, the note selections the chords that are utilized the key that we're in is something that lends itself well to a type of sadness or sorrow um, and then we also pair the tempo with all of that I'm not sure what the tempo was it didn't feel too slow to me but there's also a double tempo thing going on where I feel like we're playing half as fast as the tempo is but regardless the effect is that it sounds slow whether we're actually at a, uh, a low tempo or not this paired with the speed that we get out of the chaotic section um, definitely gives this feeling of just dragging especially with like I said the swells in the notes it's almost like dragging your feet you can't pick your feet all the way up so your toes just sort of drag along the ground and between your footprints you have these these streaks in the mud or wherever I was going with that metaphor. <laughs> um, it's it's just so lethargic and directionless and sad. There is a heavy weight on the song at this moment. It does get lifted though. We move into the well. We don't always move into it, but the next thing I want to talk about is the slow burns where we slowly increase the width and layers and volume and intensity of the song we slowly increase um, how many instruments we have what kind of sounds they're making uh, the volume of all of our instruments and it gives an energy or an electricity to the track that takes us into the chaotic section that we'll get to in a second. This to me is important because it shows a connection. If we had just gone from the dreary to the chaotic to the dreary to the chaotic with harsh transitions, then they would feel segregated. They would feel like two distinct aspects of the song rather than two sides of the same coin possibly might be a good way to view that we have a very direct route from one to the other they can be felt as a single concept in that they are very different sides of a single concept but they are tied together there are connective elements between the two of them musically and that means that there's connective elements thematically and that's why that's where i get the idea of um old decisions influencing modern problems or causing modern problems possibly even i mean yes the lyrics do back me up a little bit and it is a little odd for me to bring in lyrics to justify a thematic reading usually it's the other way around i lay down my ideas first and then dig into the lyrics but uh yeah that's what that that shift over is it, it's to tie the two parts together and even just on a musical level having the song feel connective especially when you're working with two wildly different um, styles like this is really important to making it feel like a song rather than just two riffs that you wrote and you didn't have anywhere else to put them so you just put them in one song and they didn't really work together 
Um, it helps a lot for just making this feel like a work of art rather than uh, what should have been a B-side or maybe his album padding or something like that. Um, but that to me is its importance right there. Not anything musically per se, but to tie the two together. Then we get into the most musically interesting part of the track because there's just so much to talk about here that lends itself well to larger themes at play. Primarily, we have confusion. Yeah, chaos is definitely a word that fits here, but I just don't think it works as well. I don't think that this is a chaotic track. I feel like there's opposition here, but it's not chaotic. It doesn't feel like there's a bajillion things going off or that everybody's doing their own thing. There is a unity here. There is a collective concept. It's just nobody's on the right... Nobody's doing it the same way. And I think there's no better way to understand this than in the second time that we went through it and we had those rising runs in all of the horns, the trumpet, uh, the saxophone, uh, strings, uh, the violin might have also been in here, uh, the guitar might have been doing it as well. There's a lot of layers. I probably missed a couple of instruments. It's fine. The idea is um, there's this rising idea. Just a repeating rising concept. Of course, those are not the, same, the right notes, whatever. I don't have perfect pitch and I'm not a vocalist. After we did that four times, we repeated it for another four. The second time, or the third time that we went for the repetition, we descended. Everybody started from the highest note and came down to the lowest. But this did not stick for very long. Halfway through this repetition, some of the instruments started from the bottom and went back up. And so we had this clashing feeling of rising versus falling. And then for the fourth repetition, Everyone was just doing their own things? Some of the instruments that were aligned in the falling idea, and this should be the second time of falling if we do two repetitions of up and two repetitions of down for something that is typically assumed would be the case given how they set this up. Two rising, and we begin to go into the third one of falling. A lot of music is written in four bar phrases with symmetry down the middle. Like This would be the expectation of two rising and two falling. Where this should be another set of falling, though, some of the instruments that were rising are now doing the falling. Some of the ones that were falling decided to shift sides and go for the rising. And it's just a lot of, like I said, uh, confusion. I think what I mentioned during the reaction was that it felt like everybody was given different direction. Where everybody's on the same general page, but the wrong paragraph, possibly. Uh, and they're, they're just supposed to be reading in sync, but they're all just slightly off. Like, there's good intention here. The execution just didn't work. And that's why I say it's not chaotic. Everybody is doing the same rhythmic idea. Everybody is coming in at the same beat. Everybody's ending at the same time. The rhythmic structure is sound, the notes just are not, and it creates a lot of conflict. And then we get more layers added on to this to dig into that confusion. While some of these instruments continue to do the rising and falling, I believe a saxophone comes in and just does this completely different thing entirely, adding to the chaos of the section. And this is something we see both of the other times that we enter this idea. There are similarities between some of it. In fact, the first time I think too, the first time we entered this section, um, I had mentioned how there is a slight use of dissonance. The two saxophones, I think it was, they had a lick, a melody that they did very cleanly, very harmoniously the first three times around, but on the last repetition before the phrase ended, 
they went into a very dissonant direction. I don't know if it was microtonality. I don't know if they just shifted to like a half step up to, to introduce a lot of dissonance into it. But yeah, and then they returned back to being completely harmonious, to being consonant. This was the introduction to this idea of everyone kind of being in step most of the time, but, you know, getting different direction, going different, going different routes uh, in, in parts of the, the repetition. And then, of course, by the end of the track, we have everything. We have our really fun do-do-do, 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 that really fun triplet uh, rhythm going on. And we have some of the rising and falling ideas from our second time. And we have that lick from the first time. And all of this is layered in with whatever new ideas is being presented here at the end. And the vocals are singing over this. Um, and this is the most, this is the utmost confusing aspect of the track. This is where all of the chaos comes together. Where all the micro misunderstandings have led to a mess. Going back to the idea that mistakes of our past have influenced and caused difficulties today. It's just really phenomenal to hear how the music takes this route and expands and explores upon it on both the micro and the macro. You can see it on small levels, this contrast, this, uh, this conflict even on smaller levels, but you can also see how it grows from section to section. Our first track is mostly consonant. Our second time we hit this uh, this chaotic section is, again, halfway consonant, and then we really lose it in the last half of it. And the last time that we enter this section, it is just pure chaos. It is all of the issues we've had before being represented again, but compounded because they're being represented simultaneously instead of whatever <laughs> the opposite of that is. Um, and it's just very cool to see this idea work from top to bottom. It just shows how much uh, attention to detail they put into the crafting of their music, which makes sense. Like I said at the beginning of all this, this is a song that is really reliant on emotional atmospheres not so much melodic storytelling. So if they're going to lean into one style of composition, they better do it right. <laughs> um, it's like metal bands. They really lean into riffage. I don't usually go into them looking for strong, uh, you know, emotional resonance in, in their atmospheres uh, and chord progressions. I, but I really expect them to have strong riffage. Um... The other thing that I think we need to talk about before we hit the lyrics is the vocals. They're not singing. The verses, the verses are. There is a rhythm to them, and there is a melodic flow to them, but given how much space is between the words, it almost lends itself to be heard as spoken word. And this is interesting because this kind of leans into what I've said before about just slower tempos in general, but especially when we were uh, looking at a lot of funeral doom, that it's difficult for me to hear chord progressions in really slow tempos because by the time we get to the final chord, I've kind of forgotten what the first chord felt like to kind of get the overall feeling of the progression itself. And the same thing for melody lines, that by the time you get to the end of the melody, I've kind of forgotten what the beginning was doing to tie any of it together. This is sort of a, a decent analogy for that, where it, if we sped this up, we'd be like, yeah, this dude's singing easily. But because it's so slow, it almost feels like spoken word. It's kind of difficult to hear the singing aspect of it. This is only thrown into more contention when we hit that final section uh, where there's so much, they just amplify the amount of space between each syllable and specifically even each line that they do feel like sentences rather than lines of a stanza. They've lost a bit of their rhythmic cadence 
the musical cadence and have picked up more of a very slow speaking cadence. But everything in here is dreary. The vocals, other than the outro, where they actually get a, a bit of energy, are always sung during the melancholy sections. And through that, we have vocals that are very worn down, is really low pitch. I don't even think I can hit the pitch that he has. He just has a deep voice to him. Um, and like I said, lots of distance between words and syllables. And there's just not a lot of energy or projection to it. It is just a very defeated style of singing. And it isn't until the end when we see a different uh, style of that where our vocalist begins to project and put energy into their singing. But to me, it isn't a found... It's not an energy found for determination or an energy found to fix things. It's sort of just kind of anger. <laughs> um, I, maybe that's just how I got what, what I got out of it. Let me know, you know, if you got a different emotion, but it's regret and anger and a bunch of negative emotions fueling this being upset. He's not getting louder because he's found a way to get past this melancholy. He's getting louder because he's angry about it which doesn't fix the situation. It just compounds with the noise. It makes it worse. It makes the ending more chaotic. It's interesting then that despite this rising tension at the peak of the song, we exit out of that without a transition into the beginning. A solo uh, acoustic guitar and a violin gently takes us out of the track and... If I recall correct, actually, I can link this up right now. Yes, and the album. Takes us out of the album as well. Almost as if that anger didn't solve anything. We're right back at the beginning where we were. Let's hit some lyrics. What we built from black country ground... In your car out of this small town, you on back of my new push bike wheeling down Thunder Road tonight, and I never felt so brave on that unusually forgiving Sunday. I like how there's a general flow to this, but not a rhyme scheme. It still feels fluid. Without the use of even a standardized meter to it, there's no beat to this to this uh, uh, to the stanza, but it just has a really nice flow to it. Very very cool. Anyways, um, so I don't know what black country is. It's capitalized. So is Thunder Road. I don't know if those are specific things. Maybe this is a personal track to them. But the band is Black Country New Road. So maybe this is a look back on them. What we built from Black Country Ground could be what we've crafted as a band in your car out of this small town. Again, kind of leaning in that direction. But you on the back of my new push bike wheeling down Thunder Road tonight. And I never felt so brave on that unusually forgiving Sunday. That's where this idea of looking back on the creation of the band kind of gets thrown right out the window. I don't even know if that's what we should be focusing on. Because we move so quickly from this concept of possibly writing music in a car to wheeling down Thunder Road and feeling brave on a forgiving Sunday. I mean, I guess I could just be looked at as youthful joy. I mean, the whole thing might have been that, too. It's just, you know, look at how carefree we were back then. We didn't know that we would be a big band, and we were just kids making music and having fun. Which goes back to the, the pensive melancholy I was talking about, looking back on the past. Although there's nothing in here about past mistakes, so we'll see. Uh, verse 2, what we built to keep ourselves warm. 
burnt your hand and charmed the locals. All those mistakes laid out plainly. Anyone could see the clamp. Anyone could see that the clamp was breaking me. And one more time for the record. So, like, I want to take the first two lines in a metaphorical route. What we built to keep ourselves warm burnt your hand. So, you know, what what we were doing that we thought was helping to us to survive ended up hurting us. I don't get the part about charming the locals, though. Yeah, I got nothing on that. But, yeah, there's this idea that we thought we were safe with the fire and it ended up hurting us kind of vibe. And uh, says all those mistakes laid out plainly, anyone could see the clamp was breaking me. And one more time for the record. Yeah, I, mm, I don't know. Everybody's coming up. I guess I'm a little late to the party. Uh, everyone's coming up. I guess I'm a little late to the party. Now everyone's coming up. I guess I should have something else to say. And now everyone's coming up. What we built must fall to the rising flames. And then we repeat a few more times. Everyone's coming up. I guess I'm a bit late to the party. Now it's interesting we talk about rising flames when in verse 2 we talk about uh, building a fire to keep warm and it burning our hands. Possibly if we combine these two lines, whatever they were doing that they've metaphorically related to survival. Not only burnt their hands, but the fire got so out of control that everything that they've built is up in flames now. But I have no idea what that has to do with being late to a party and everybody else rising up to the occasion or uh, just getting better in life maybe. Oh, that's what everybody's coming up. Everybody that I know, their life is improving. I guess I'm a little late to the party though. My life is, my life's just starting to take that turn. Maybe? I don't know. And of course, you know, bringing that back to everything else we've talked about, the musical themes that we've explored, I, this whole outro bit, I'm, I, I just, I don't know how to tie it all back. I barely know what it's talking about. <laughs> uh, I guess we're just going to wrap that up here then. Um, there's definitely some elements in here that feel like they are talking about uh, the sins of the past, mistakes of the past, and how they can influence the present, like I felt in the music, but not everything kind of goes that direction, and there's a quite a few lines that kind of go over my head. I think I've got a good read of verse 1, but verse 2 and the outro are, uh, they're evading me a bit, and it makes it difficult to understand the themes of the lyrics to tie it into the music, but I think I have a strong read on the music. Those are my thoughts on Black Country New Road's Opus. So where you guys come in, let me know what's going on. Let me know what you think of this track, if you enjoy it or not. Anything you'd like to add. And, of course, if you have any insight here, I feel like I'm so close. But I'm just, I'm missing the last part of the puzzle here. It's, it's, uh, let me know. If, if you guys can educate me what's going on here. I'm all ears, as usual, but specifically here I want to point out, because I am very curious about unlocking this puzzle now. <laughs> uh, above the comment section is a description box, and in there you'll find a link for Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here, has links for everything related to the channel. You can find multiple ways to support the channel, including Patreon, which allows you to vote on future themes and songs. And you can find all the communities that revolve around the channel, such as Twitter and Discord. I have been doing this for years. Why do I always forget it's Twitter and Discord? Not Twitter and Twitch, not Twitter and Patreon, Twitter and Discord. Okay, I'm rambling. Let's wrap this up. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I don't know why they didn't pop up. There we go. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, so that wraps up for this. We have a special selection today as well. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual, though I got to check on that because 
We should be ending daylight saving time soon, and we'll be going to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, somewhere early November. I don't think it's yet, so I don't have to worry about it just now, but it is coming up. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.